Hey everyone, my name is Caleb Dean from Studio Stendo, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build an internal team for your branding project in order to clear up confusion. Yeah, that means creating an optimal team for working with brand designers and branding agencies. So let's get into it. Good businesses hire what they need to succeed. When you need law services, you hire lawyers. When you need accounting services, you hire accountants and you hire specialists to do whatever it is that you need to be done. That's just the practice of good business. That includes brand identities and website designs. Whether you have an outdated brand identity, a marketing program that's not working, you're losing clients to competitors, or there's an expanding market or a growing competition in the market, whatever it may be, it's time to book those brand design services and you're thinking about how you build a team in order to do that. First, we'll talk about how big the team should be. Briefly put, three to five team members is the right size. I could leave it at that, but let's break down why that's the right size. If you think about the average optimal meeting length, which is about 45 minutes, with about five team members and usually two to three designers on the outsource, that's eight people total when you're coming to a meeting. Now imagine those three designers take 10 or 15 minutes to present design concepts or theories or website mockups, whatever it may be, you're down to 35 to 30 minutes and then you have five people who need to talk or give feedback or ask questions. That breaks down to only six or seven minutes a person, which if you have a long-winded designer who likes to talk about design, that's really only one question per person before the meeting time is over. So logistically, five people is sort of a max when working with a branding agency. It's also easier to have more intimate and deep diving conversations with smaller groups of people. So that group of three to five people are gonna be more intimate with each other, they're gonna be easier to have conversations with, and they're gonna be able to get to the root of the problem a little bit easier than asking general glazing questions and getting to a decision that eventually leads to a new brand project that helps you get your brand faster, roll it out sooner, and start reaping the benefits of the value gained from that project more quickly. But I know that only three to five people is a limited roster. So we've got five user roles to fill out when building your team. To outline them, you're gonna have one, a strategic leader slash facilitator, two, a creative relator, three, a logistics manager, four, a realist achiever, and five, an analytical critic. Let's break down what those five roles are and how they're gonna work. First, your strategic leader slash facilitator. I like to think about the metaphor from Good to Great by Jim Collins where he talks about great leaders being bus drivers and great leaders get the right people on the bus and then ask them where they want to go with it. This is the role of your strategic leader slash facilitator. This is often someone who identifies initiatives or the process for a new brand design. It's the person thinking about the investment and the organization's future and they're thinking about the future needs of what has to be done and how you're gonna get there. At small organizations, this is usually the business owner, but in larger organizations, this is someone who has the freedom and the time to think about those things. So at a college or university, it may not be the president of the college. At a major corporation or company, it's not necessarily the CEO. Rather, it's roles who have space to think creatively and move the organization into a new direction that's gonna benefit the whole system. The next role that you want is the creative relator. Now the creative relator functions as an early adopter. If you imagine anybody at your company who's getting on board with new ideas really quickly and ex gains excitement about those, you want this person on the team. This person really is the wind behind the sails of the strategic leader. Now, just because creative's in the title doesn't mean that they need to be a creative or visual maker. They don't need to be an affluent designer or artist or in marketing. In fact, those are sort of bonus roles that you can add on later but they should have the desire to see the change through. This is the person who's gonna be the fuel in the fire, who gets excited, they show up to meetings early, they're taking notes because they're really on the edge of their seat for the change that's about to take place. If you can imagine an optimist in your organization who has the company's utmost success at heart, then this is your person. So with strategy in mind and an engine to propel it through the finish line, the third pivotal role that you need is a logistics manager. Now these people are the anchor to the creative relator and the strategic leader. 
This person knows the ins and outs of the business. They know what it takes to execute, to maintain, and to keep the business running from the trenches. This person is indispensable in working with the brand agency because it really keeps their heads out of the clouds and makes sure that what they're gonna be making and creating for you is gonna have an impact and it's gonna make your lives easier, not harder. If, for example, you're working on a project where you're redesigning the athletics website of a college or university, the statistics manager is going to be a great person to bring onto this team. The statistics person is going to have a head for numbers, and they're going to know exactly what that website backend needs to do, where they're entering stats and they're working through schedules and they're building player rosters. All of those things are really heavy legwork that a website might need to do that a strategic leader or a creative relator aren't going to understand. The logistics manager really brings their expertise to the table to make sure the design work will be usable and therefore infinitely more valuable to the company than something that just has its head in the clouds. Ultimately, you can stop building your team at those three roles if you have people who fill those really, really well. Otherwise, you can add these two bonus roles. First, the realist achiever. The realist achiever both multiplies the logistics manager role and sets the pace of the strategic leader. While these people are oftentimes the first to give their realistic feedback, they're also the first to implement your new brand identity or website or whatever it may be that you're getting services for. And if they're not the first ones to implement it, they sure are the first ones to take on the homework the design agency might assign you. The second bonus role and the fifth role in this list is an analytical critic. Now they're similar to the realistic achiever and the logistics manager. They have more of a square head on their shoulders but they're boosting the strategic output of the strategic leader. Because it's the role of the brand design agency to be creative and offer up visual solutions, the analytical critic makes sure to assess the other business outcomes along with the brand identity design. They'll be analyzing the work and thinking about the output and making sure all team members are connected together and on the same page and just tying in any last questions that you might have as a group. Oftentimes, your analytical critic is quiet and reserved and only asks one or two questions or has one or two comments, but they're very pointed and really great things to add on to your team. With even just the first three roles, you'll have the teammates that you need in order to successfully work with a branding agency and roll out that brand identity project that you're working on, no matter the scale. For those of you who are really familiar with your colleagues, some names may even have come to mind while reading or watching this video, and it honestly is just as simple as that. Pick those first instinct people, round out that team, and get started on that brand identity project.